This video is sponsored by Hotspot Shield, a VPN to protect your privacy, data and freedom to browse censored websites. Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and welcome to my 2014 version 2.0 edition of my editing room tour. So I wanted to start by giving you a sweeping view of the editing room and all of the equipment, desking and seating before moving over to the right hand side of the editing room and showing you the first desk. And this is made of a solid caramel bamboo worktop and that's sitting on top of some IKEA cabinets. I'll show you the contents of those in a short while. Next up, I wanna move around and show you my chair. Now the chair is a very important investment. If you're sitting at your desk for prolonged periods of time, it's extremely important to have something nice and ergonomic to sit on. And this is a Herman Miller Mirror 2 chair. Now let's take a look at the contents of the desk. And we we'll start just here behind this first monitor. This is one of two Ruark MR1 speakers. These are great for monitoring back audio or playing music. Next up, you can see this little piece clamped to the side of the bamboo desk. This is the clamp section of the Rode PSA1. This is a microphone arm, and you can see on top of it a Rode NT-USB microphone. So before we go back on top of the desk, let's take a look underneath. This is my Mac Pro. This is a late 2013 Mac Pro, which I use for all of my video work. Now moving round to this right hand storage cupboard, this is really just for some external hard drives used for various backups. Some of them are used for client work, some of them are used for photography. None of them in this cupboard are used for video work. And then on the bottom shelf there, there is some cleaning material, an extra mic stand, pop shield, laptop stand, etc. and some other accessories. Now let's move round to the other cupboard, and this is very, very important equipment in here. This is where all my video work is stored. Now I must emphasize that this is not used with the cupboard door closed. It generates far too much heat, and that wouldn't be good for anything, and it would certainly lessen the lifespan of the equipment inside. So do bear that in mind if you're storing electrical equipment inside cupboards. Now the bottom of the cupboard there has got a uh, six-way extension lead in there for the equipment to be plugged into. Second shelf up, it's got a couple of hard drives, a Seagate backup hard drive and also a C5 big Thunderbolt hard drive. And then on the top shelf there, we have got an Ethernet switch and then just tucked around there, we have got a USB hub. So now let's have a look at these two monitors on the main desk. Now the one on the right is new to the editing room. This is an LG 34UM95P. It's a 34 inch monitor with a 21.9 format ratio and it's got a resolution of 3440 by 1440. Think of it as one and a half widescreen monitors and that'll give you a good idea of how wide it is. It is an absolutely awesome design it's got this floating foot on the bottom, so it looks like the display is actually floating in midair, and it's connected to the Mac Pro underneath the desk via Thunderbolt. Yes, this is designed for the Mac Pro. It actually connects via Thunderbolt. It has a second Thunderbolt port on the back, so you can daisy chain devices. It's also got HDMI as well. It is an IPS display, so very high quality, and I'm extremely pleased with it. It's a very nice display. Now moving across to the second display, this is an Apple Thunderbolt display, and these two monitors in tandem work extremely well. I can have all of my main editing on the right hand monitor, and this is just brilliant because you get to see so much of your timeline across that bottom section there, that it's just a, a real joy to use for video editing. And then the left hand monitor is mainly used for websites, Twitter, etc., emails, and I switch between the two screens as and when I'm working on various things. Now let's look at some of the control methods on the desk. Well, before we do that, what are these two notebooks? Yes, these are old school Moleskine or Moleskine, however you want to pronounce it, two regular notebooks. And I use these for making notes regarding new videos and also my video schedules. So not everything's done electronically in this room. And then moving across, we have got an Apple Magic trackpad. And then we've got a Logitech K750 solar keyboard. This is a wireless keyboard. And the reason I like this is because it's got a numeric keypad, 
very nice typing experience on this keyboard and it recharges not off of direct sunlight although it does do that but it also recharges off of the lights in the room so it's extremely good because i never need to plug it in we've got a memory card reader sitting in the middle there that's a usb3 lexar memory card reader and i use that for getting all of the video footage off of my various cameras and then we've got a just mobile drawer this is used just to store various bits and pieces in we've got memory cards we've got another apple magic trackpad over the back we've also got some usb thumb drives a magic mouse etc and it keeps everything nicely stored there's a little ridge in the front there so you can put a pen in there if you want made of metal plastic fronted drawer and it's also got some cable escapes out the back so you can use this to put perhaps a hard drive in and have a cable coming out the back of the drawer and neatly tucked behind your desk and then let's just have a look at some of the extra equipment over to the left here now the two phones on the right here this is the lg g3 this is an awesome flagship smartphone from lg really great it's got really high resolution display and then across here is the iphone 5s and then my ipad air now i use the ipad air just for checking notes scripting and things like that when i'm recording videos i mainly use this in the studio and then if i need to refer to the notes it comes up with me to the editing room and i can use this if i need to refer back to those notes and just to the left hand side of that thunderbolt display you can see the second ruark mr1 so before i show you the other equipment let's come back across and just show you how this all looks together i think it's laid out very well indeed the foam that you can see behind the monitors this is aix foam this is really good for room acoustics and i installed it in this particular pattern people have asked me why i missed out these sort of triangular segments well i did experiment with foam all over the ceiling area and it deadened the acoustics of the room too much so i had to remove some of the aox foam to get the perfect balance in room acoustics and then for this update for the editing room for 2014 i extended the aix foam behind that second setup and that's purely so that if i do any recording over in that area i get very similar acoustics to using the main mac pro so now let's take a look in this corner here of the editing room and this is my late 2013 macbook pro this is a 15 inch retina version with a 2.3 gigahertz intel core i7 processor now just underneath this is a tascam us 600 audio interface and then over in the corner here we've just got some of my pens and pencils in a little bamboo stand and then let's move up to this section here now this looks like a microphone stand but indeed it is not this is an led light from yellow tech this is the yellow tech mica studio light so whilst we're on this shelf let's have a look at what's up here this is a new addition to the editing room as well and from left to right we've got the audio technica ath m50s we've got my panasonic lumix g6 this is the camera i used up until about two or three months ago and i switched over to the gh4 which i'm recording this video with now then we've got my munchman game from grandstand bit of retro game in there i used to have one of these as a child and i just recently acquired another one and then we've got my olympus omd em1 which i use for my photography a great camera absolutely awesome and then behind that is a domo sent in by a viewer and then to the right is the vw camber van from lego yes this is made with lego so before we take a look at what's on the white desk let's take a look at this left hand side of the editing room and this is my steve jobs figurine i've got a few of these this is my favorite though from legend toys the detail in this figurine is absolutely fantastic if you want to see a video that is all about this figurine then please do check out my channel even down to the detail on the new balance trainers look at that unbelievable and he's sitting there on a chair with his macbook air in lap and then moving across this is my canon printer i've got a couple of canon printers i've got an mp640 which is in another room and i've also got this this is an ix6550 so now let's take a look at the white desk area but before we take a look at what's on top let's have a look underneath and behind that white screening there is a power strip 
all of the equipment on this white desk and indeed plenty of the other equipment in the editing room are served up with power by this. Now instead of opting for a traditional surge protector or power extension cable, I opted for this. This is a Dynamo 12 socket surge protected power strip which is really designed to go into a rack mount cabinet but it works equally as well underneath a desk. And then to the right we've got my late 2010 Mac Pro. Now before I upgraded to the late 2013 Mac Pro this was used for primarily most of my video editing. I still did some video editing on the Mac Mini but most of the longer projects were done on this particular machine. Now let's go back on top of the desk and you can see the second Apple Thunderbolt display with that really great 27 inch display and a resolution of 2560 by 1440. Now either side of the display are a couple of white speakers and these are audio engine A2 plus speakers. They really are fantastic quality. Now, apart from looking great in their white glossy casing, they've also got these angled stands underneath, and this just angles them up to a nice sort of listening position when you're sitting here editing. And again, really good quality audio, not too much colorization to the audio, just a good quality, and they go very loud if you want them to. But for monitoring back audio while I'm video editing, they're more than capable enough. Now, just underneath, the 27 inch Thunderbolt display are two products. This here is a just mobile M table and it just raises up the Thunderbolt display to a nice viewing position, just a nice height for good ergonomics. And then underneath that is the Mac mini. Now this Mac mini, as I say, is more than capable of editing video. So now let's have a look at what I use to control the Mac mini. We've got two products here, both by Logitech. This is Logitech K750 Solar Wireless Keyboard again. This is the white and silver version. I showed you the white and black version a little while ago. And alongside this K750 is the Logitech Wireless Trackpad. And then the white desk is actually from Ikea again. Yes, they get a lot of my business. This is an Ikea Galant desk, 120 centimetres in width, 60 centimetres in depth, and it's sitting on top of a silver A-frame. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching the editing room tour as much as I enjoyed recording it. There is an extended version of this video available. It's available for patrons only. If you check out the link in the video description to my Patreon campaign and you can support the Geeky Noise channel, that will gain you access to this extended version video. Very, very special video because I go into greater detail about some of the products in the editing room and also give you some insight as to why I selected various products as well. So thank you very much for watching again. If you've got any questions at all, leave them in the comments section below or indeed get in touch with me via my social networks. All of the links you need are in the video description. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, there are two places you can find the subscribe button. On the main channel page, it's just up here in the top right hand corner. If you're on a video watch page, then you'll find it just underneath the video you've been watching. Click on the subscribe button and that means that you are now subscribed to the Geekanoids channel. But there is one more step you must take. Click on the little cog icon next to the subscribed button, put a tick in the send me updates box and click save. Job done. Thank you very much for watching again. I'll see you next time.